Hello everybody. Welcome to a uh, uh, shop. It's not going to be a wood. We are in the wood shop. Um, my bench is a disaster. Which can be interesting because what we're doing today? Fixing the G27. Anyone who's watched my streams or the VOD from my streams or the VOD posted on YouTube knows the end of my American truck on Friday the 16th, whatever, of July, um, this wheel, basically that was, that was centered. So I had that much turn to it. That was centered instead of that. So now we got to fix it. Okay, because of a lack of generally available space, this is the best we're going to do. Hopefully you're going to be able to see everything. So the first thing, I've watched a few videos on this, so I know, you don't do the first thing, which is you think, take these screws off. No. Bad. <laughs> Causes problems. What we want to do is we want to start here and work our way inside from the front, which means I need some hex keys, and luckily I have plenty of those. I even have one on a triple for my bike. Oh, there we go. No idea what size that is. Here we go. We gotta take this guy apart. And if it breaks, I mean there's nothing I can really do to, you know, make it any worse. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, I hate that. It's gonna piss me off. Go. Alright. If you don't have a set like this, you don't have a set like this, you, you owe it to yourself to get one. Because it's totally worth it. Every penny that I paid for it. No, I, don't, I actually don't remember how many pennies I paid for it. It's too small. So that is a... Okay, 5, 30 seconds. Sure enough it is. You watch these people on... Um, Watch other people do this, and they're all like using hand tools. We don't play that. When we put it together, we might use hand tools, but not taking it apart. Okay. I have no idea, but now you go there. All right, whatever. There they are. Wonderful bug collectors. Always good to have. Keep them. These are pocket screw um, containers. Keep them because they become storage. All right, so now we want to be very careful because we've got these two these two wires that are running in here. There's a couple options here. We're going to go with option two. Stay. Option two. Yeah, not there. Uh, yeah, that should be it. Another cool thing that I bought, I don't know how long ago. Awesome. Alrighty. So what we're going to do instead of disconnecting the wires, which you would think the most logical thing to do here is to do a wire disconnect. Instead I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to try take the whole board out in one piece. Because then, instead of undoing two wires, I undo one, because this board is the sequencing board for all the buttons on the front. Side. And it is connected to a single wire on the back. Now, we just need to get this guy out. And he 
is going to be a pain in the butt, of course. Just stay there. Stay. No movie. No falling. Stop it. I saw that movement. Stop. Just don't move. It should be wide enough. Nope. All right. Be careful because the last thing I want to do is pull these wires loose. Are they using a catch on there? It doesn't look like they're using a catch. Those aren't going to work. I'm not going to get wide enough. Stay there to move thing. Where did my... Fine. Go with these ones. Well, that should be wide enough. There we go. There we go. Yep. Just like that, we got the wheel loose. That goes over there. All right. So now, you can see, we're at the point where we can see inside. Now there's a set of screws in here. We don't want to mess with these ones, because those ones are holding these paddle shifters in, which, believe it or not, are just spring-mounted. The actual button is on the back of the, the wheel, so we don't want to do those. So we're going to do these three screws here. there for now. That is not as much as that feels like it should it is slipping. Oh, I found the other ones. All right. This is another cool tool. I don't know how long I've had this thing. So this is a ratcheting screwdriver. That is in. That's out. It's a standard connection, so I can take the one right out of my drill. It fits right in there. Obviously, if you don't have all these... Uh, Tools. <laughs> you can get away with so far a 530 seconds Allen wrench and yeah, I'd say you probably want the pliers and a, a small screwdriver and a larger one. Now this should release this housing and then we're going to have to feed this back through. We're going to be really careful. Last thing I want to do is strip a screw. Yeah. Those are all good. And the other thing I'm doing is I'm feeling these screws as they come out to see if they have any grease on them. Because the last thing I need is to stick a greasy screw into my container here because my container is not clean in the slightest. All right, you. The other nice thing about this is because it's got the ball on the end, you can really get a nice push to make sure it doesn't skip, which is what I'm doing. There we go. Right now, this, there we go, comes loose. Now we just get that guy right through there. There we go. There's our paddle shifters. Nice. All right. Now. Now. Look at all the crap in there. Ew, I see some grease, some hair. Oh, that's cat hair back when we had a cat. All right. Now. 
we're going to want to take apart the clamshell here. Oh, we don't play with clamshells. A little bit of a little bit of Loctite on there. Well, you're going to be okay. I can't get you out with that. Grab one of the smaller ones. Yep, that'll work. I do love this ratcheting screwdriver. I mean, if there's a point at which you just do it by hand, but the ratcheting screwdriver at the beginning, beautiful. The nice thing about this is as you take it apart, you can see what they've done. I mean, the plastic is a, it's a decent enough plastic. It's got to be glass fiber reinforced in some manner. Percentage, I don't know. And I'm not going to bother to really care enough to find out. But... Get out. Thank you. All right. Now those guys, get in there with that one, but... Uh -huh. See? These... these these uh, packaging engineers always seem to believe that if they make the screws hard enough, somehow we're not going to get into their machine. But as I've told every packaging engineer I know, and I know a couple, you ain't going to do it. If we want in, we're going to get in the machine. Okay, I mean, screwdriver with a longer shank. Thin and long is what I really need. That was chewed up. Is it serviceable though? Looks like it. Old, but serviceable. Fortunately, too chewed for that. I need something with that. I'm gonna, oh, get in there. Oh, you little snake in the grass. Okay. I want something like that one, only thinner. Let's get, no, that's not grabbing at all. Okay. have an entire yep that will work it's good to have an entire collection of these suckers just sitting off camera I have no idea what that what that uh, twisty tie is doing on there but at some point I needed it for something and I twisty tie on it I'm just dropping it in there, and you can always feel when these things seat. So. I was getting to the point where I was getting concerned I was going to have to go steal DOS's kit, tool kit to get in here, but no, no, we got it. We got it. I'm curious if these two screws here actually are holding anything or that they just serve to hold the grip on the bottom. Nope, it looks like we're okay. Oh, you ran away, little buggers. Yeah, I kind of knew that was going to happen. All right. Good, everybody? No. Most everybody. I should clean out a little bit better before I did this, but all right. Now we're going to try to get this to do. Ha. Come on.
Okay, what I'm doing here, what I'm trying to position it so it will, there we go, grip onto my table saw like that, because then I feel like I have a little bit better leverage. All right. So I want to come off the bat. Looking good. I see what my problem is. Where did I just put that screwdriver? I was just messing with it, I guess. A couple of these guys haven't fully released. There it is. Should be everybody. Everybody out of the pool. No. All right. We're guessing. We're guessing now that these two might actually be connecting something. So I'm thinking these two items are, are in some way or shape connecting something. So we're just going to go ahead and remove them. Even if they aren't, okay. um, having them out is probably for the best. I think it only connects that, but whatever. Yeah, yeah, looks like it'll connect to that. All right. Did I get all this? Those screws are gone. That screw hasn't come out. Okay, that screw is now loose. Aha! Feel it now. Okay. There we go. All right, here's the top. Here are the those positional units. This is why I kind of wanted to get it gripped on here a little bit because those positional units. There we go. Okay. All right. We got something now. All right, so we gotten in here. We can see there's there's a good bit of grease right in there. That's fine. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mess with this very much. Okay. As you come around here, here's one here is one motor, and here's our other motor. It's a big board with all the rectifiers on it. This is what we're concerned about right here. Underneath here is a board, and that board is the board that deals with centering for the unit. So that's where we need to get to. I did want to look at. Um, yeah, that's a, I'm pretty sure that's a pretty decent glass fiber reinforce. Yeah, that's a pretty, it's a pretty decent plastic. I mean, they're not, they're not chintzing us on the plastic, plastic. So, all right, we need to, um, pop this guy loose. And I'm going to put you guys down before I do that. Cause I don't, last thing I want to do is damage any of those wires. Cause I don't want to have to deal with that. Okay, my hands might be in the way from time to time, but you're going to have to just deal. Alrighty. And actually, what I'm going to do is, as soon as I find where in the blazes I put them, we need a little bit more light on the subject. So let's do that. I love these Ryobi lamps. There we go. Sure that doesn't blow you guys out so you can't see nothing. Okay, good. All right, a little bit more light on the subject. We can see what we're doing. All right. I think this thing wants to come straight back, but there's this wire connection right there that I'm worried about. I don't really want to move the board, but I think I will. Just because if I can pick the board and move the board, Wouldn't do that because if I pick and move the board, come on, now. thank you. I'm gonna put these right here. I can slide the board a little bit to my right, which is away from you guys. 
think we'll be in a better position. I don't want to really take these wires out, but I might before we go too far. Anybody who works computers is probably screaming at me to be grounded. Well, the beauty of Colorado is that's really not my concern right now. All right. Yeah. All right. Just for safety's sake, we're going to pull the board completely out. Gently pulling these. Maybe a little bit more difficult now. I don't want to pull on the wires themselves. I actually want to pull either side of them. Where did that needle nose go? Right there. If it was a snake, it would have bit me. Clamped right down on that wire. I don't want that. Hmm. All right. I don't like how that's grabbing. Okay. You really want to get these guys out because there's enough danger of me hitting this. All right. There. It's out of the way. Okay. So now I need to get this sucker out of here now. It looks like it's just a clip of some sort. Yep. Somehow I gotta get this clip loose. There is a wire going in the back here. I'm sorry if my head is in the way, but that's the way it's gonna roll here. Can I get that in its position? Probably. I'm actually sweating quite a bit right now because this is like, man, I really don't want to break, break this wheel. I really like it. So everyone said that this this is just some sort of clipped device on here. I'm really I'm really thinking this board has got to get out of here somehow. not going to work because then I'm just crimping over there. Oh, that's good. All right, that might have that might have done a little bit of damage to that wire. So we are not going to mess with that anymore. We need to. It doesn't have a lock on it, does it? No? No, it's just like the other one. Hmm. <laughs> All right, I got to pick this up and look at it a little bit better. Nothing that tells me why this thing is sitting in here. Okay. Right. Let's get that. I'm just thinking I could actually pull. No, I don't want to pull that. I was thinking I could pull the uh, the two plug buses, but I don't want to pull the bus on that because that would that would get that out of the way. If I did, I'm not 100% sure I can seat it back in there properly. So we're not going to do that. I'm not 100% sure I can get it back in. We're not going to do it. Come on. Where would be? Ah. It's like 
I know I had a tool for doing this kind of stupid stuff. And this is just a plastic thing. <laughs> so my hope is, there we go, there. That's nicer. All right, I just need to get that thing under there and then there we go. Come on, get off. You are wanted somewhere else. You said, the worst comes to worst, right? I break the board and then we're screwed, but I think it's going to be okay. Just, all right, I got that pried up a little bit on that side. Let me get it up a little bit on this side. There we go. Now we get progress. There, woo, got it. All right, last one to pry out. This guy down here. Then I can just push this whole board out of the way. There, right. come on. I'm not going to pry at the wrong spot. There, there. I just need just enough separation to get the tip of the tool under there. There we go. There. All right. Board is out of the way. Woo! That's fun. Again, sometimes having the right tools. <laughs> if you don't have this, if you don't have something like this, um, it's just really thin, heavy-duty heavy plastic. You could probably make it pretty quick with a knife and a um, bit of plastic. You want a good heavy-duty plastic to do that. But There we go. We got that loose now. There. Got room to maneuver. I really need you. Where's the other end of it? There it is. Oh, you sneak on the grass. All right, there, there we go, there we go, there we go, there. All right, now, here is, all right, I'm gonna be interesting. Let me see if I can show you this. Uh, let's see if I can just zoom in on here, get this thing to focus. Focus! All right think you'll be able to see this. I don't know. Should be able to. Yeah. All right, so this is the optical rectifier that, that drives centering and drift. So basically as the, the wheel drifts to one direction, that's being caused by the optical rectifier, which is right here, this, this spins, and it's being read by this unit here. Now what they say is, what usually causes problems is this not being tight, but this is right on. I don't know what they think is going on. I almost think you guys can't see it, but I'm looking down in here on the uh, the threads, and I'm just trying to make sure that I don't have any broken teeth on my cog. Because um, I don't want to take it out unless I absolutely have to, because it is greased in here, and it is greased like nobody's business. So I am just looking to see. Those all look really nice.
All right, that all looks good. So then, they say this rectifier is the primary cause of problems in this unit, but that looks really well in there. Yeah, I could barely move that screw anywhere. That one's in good, good position. That's a real pain in the rear end, but we're going to try this a little bit differently. The old Yankee Ingenuity uh, 90 degree. can't imagine that one screw at the bottom is actually the cause of all my problems. If I wanted to test that, how the heck would I test that? Oh, how could I get that motor out? I don't think I can. I think that motor is pretty much in there until I tear the whole unit down. Alright, so the rectifier doesn't look bad. So, really, I'm really puzzled by what I felt in the wheel when I was turning. So what I felt in the wheel when I was turning was I could feel like, almost like it was jumping the gears like that. But that unit no, it's not held down by that. It's held down by the whole thing. So when the clamshell is on, that should keep that in place. Okay. That's the theory anyway, everybody. That's the theory. Okay, well, we've taken it apart. I don't see any issue with that, with that item there all the holes in it, because it's rectifying on the holes. There's, I think, based on what I've read, it's an optical unit, so it's using a laser light in there. And this little washer thing has a bunch of holes in it. But I don't see... It's not running on anything, meaning it doesn't have any gearing in it. But there you go. Huh. It's a relatively simple, mo a simple machine. I mean, the biggest... You've got two big motors and a board that's doing all the, the computations. It's not even that... It's not even that amazing of a board. It's got one... one main chip, three bus chips, it looks like. It's got one main capacitor, it looks in good nick. I mean, we're... There's nothing on this board that would make me say this has got a problem on it. So I think the board is clean. I mean, the best I can think is if we seal her back up, see what happens. I'm going to put this guy back on in here because it's protecting the, uh, the optical chip. So we want to Get out of the way, board. Really don't want you down there, but whatever. I'm kind of wondering, and this is just me thinking, seeing the inside of this machine in person versus on the internet. I'm wondering if the um, that way originally. Um, I'm wondering if the Okay, there we go. Um, I'm wondering if this unit, because it's black, I'm wondering if that's not getting hot over time. And ATS seems to make more use of that force feedback system than, um, than ETS. The only other thing I can think of is to actually... 
So this thing's air flow is pretty restricted. Whoa, is it way more restricted than I thought it was? Okay. That's um that's weird. There's not enough power on the on the unit, which is unfortunate. I was hoping that maybe there'd be an extra slot on the board. Because if there was an extra power slot on the board, I actually have an old 100 millimeter fan. And I'd actually position an old 100 millimeter fan in here, but that's not going to happen. So I guess we're putting her back together and we're hoping for the best because there's no reason for this thing to be acting up the way it is. So let's uh, put together and see what happens. One of the reasons I wanted to do this, by the way, just as a, an aside, as I'm slowly putting this board back together off your view, um, one of the reasons I wanted to do this is to show you this is not a, this isn't scary. I mean, it's, you got to take your time, you got to have patience. It helps to have some really quality tools, but there's, there's nothing scary about doing any of this. Um, you're not, the worst that's going to happen, I mean, yeah, okay, the worst that's going to happen is you break your, your piece of equipment, but if it's already acting up, you gotta ask yourself, does it really matter at that point? Um, it's already not working properly, so does it matter if you, uh, if you get in there and mess around with it? The other thing is, if you get in there and mess around with it, you're gonna learn something about how these things are put together. And to be honest, uh, unfortunately, well, to be honest, unfortunately, the G27 is no longer in production, and I've heard the G29 is not nearly as nice in terms of how they built it, um, because companies are forever getting cheaper. But if you find yourself an old one that doesn't work, take it apart. Maybe, maybe it could be something as simple as one of these wires um, has the insulation stripped off it. You can pick up uh, insulation at um, Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever, wrap it around there, hit it with a heat gun, seal it back up, and you might have yourself a working wheel from that. All right, next step, putting the clamshell. Yes, putting the clamshell back on. Oh, I wanted to show you. I thought this thing had, when you look at this, you're like, oh, that's got venting, and it's got venting, and it's got venting, right? That's what you, you look at it. Oh, look, vents, vents, vents. There's vents everywhere. There are two vents there. Those are so solid, okay? The, the theoretical venting that's there doesn't exist. That doesn't exist, that's solid. This, that is a hole, but look, it goes straight back into this really narrow, you can barely see it, really narrow um, airflow unit. And there is no, there's not a lot of air getting in here. Now, what I might consider, now I no longer have a cat, is, and, and what I will probably do is I have somewhere thermometer. It's a nice laser thermometer, right? So what I think I'm probably going to do is I'm, when I play with this, after this thing starts acting up, if it starts acting up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit that with the laser thermometer. And if I get something that's super hot, then I'll consider whether I take this back apart and then in here hit it with one of my um, my drills. So I can put a bunch of really small fine drills in there and actually drill that mesh 
to create airflow. Um, so that's something I'll do after I get this thing back together. And if it still acts a foo, a foo, I tell you, a foo. Right, so I'll get that in there, get that in there, and, and, boom, boom, it's back together. Ha <laughs> ha, look at that, back together. All right, that part is anyway. All right, screw time. Let's screw this sucker back together. Gotta make sure you can see what I'm doing too. Oh, yeah, you can. All right, you're good. All right. Long. Okay, what are those shorts? Oh, those shorts are for that. Yeah, okay. Woo. Bombs away. Bombs away. Again, packaging engineers, if there's any packaging engineers watching, stop it. Just stop it. Oh, interesting. I'm missing a screw. Well, it's not shocking in my shop at all. Okay, well, we'll be looking for that in a minute. All right. And then those four go to that, and those two go to that. So, yeah, I'm missing one screw. And, oh, there's my screw there. Uh, oh well, um, and I'm not too worried about it because whatever. It's it is makes more sense to take your stuff apart not on a table saw. I'm saying um, I would have taken it apart on my workbench, but my workbench is covered over in uh, wood for other projects. So in that case, because I lost one, you'll know that what I did is I went for the edges. And I didn't put it in here because I don't care. I, at this point, when you think about it from the perspective of um, dynamics and physics, dynamics and statics, that is holding this clam together, but it's I'm taking that back. Actually, you got the screw here. So we should be able to, with that screw, be okay if we're missing a screw here. If I don't feel like it, if I can't find it, I will look for it. Um, and I think the suckers are magnetic, so hold on. Let's find out if they are. They should be. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can find it. All kinds of things. Um, they are not screws. <laughs> ah, ah. Oh, I thought I found it. No, nope, I found bits of something else. <laughs> yeah, I'm hearing all these clangs of metal. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so I didn't drop it down there. That's goodish news. Oh well, it's somewhere. It'll turn up. If it doesn't turn up, you can always find another one. I have plenty of spare screws. Oh, I found it! I found it, guys! I found it. Hey, are you actually going in? Sit right here. Ha ha! There we go. All right, simple process. Put it all back together. But again. Going back to what I was sort of saying before, don't be afraid to take your stuff apart. I mean, once it's past warranty, do you care? Once it's past warranty, nobody's going to do anything for you anyway. Even before it's past warranty, take it apart. You ain't going to do nothing that, that, I mean, yeah, you might break it, but, you know, don't be afraid of it. Too many people nowadays are too afraid to take apart their equipment. And then we end up with this throwout culture that we live in today. So I say to you, if something stops working before you throw it out, even if you're not going to fix it before you throw it out, take it apart and see how it works. I got a fan over in my shop that is not working anymore. You plug it in, you hit the button, 
it starts up for a couple minutes and then it shuts back down. The, the, I figure the electric motor is shot. I'm going to take it apart. I'll see how it's going to work. Um, it's an oscillating fan. I'm kind of curious how they did this oscillation with it. Um, yeah. So that's, I guess, my big thing. Don't, don't be afraid to take apart your stuff. Especially if it's broken, it's not working anyway. So just take it apart. And especially, and this is, you know, what, what you need is not much. You know, I have a lot of tools. I have access to, to tons of tools that I've inherited or collected or whatever. You don't need that. Go to Lowe's, pick yourself up a, a good all-in-one kit, or if you feel those are too expensive, go to um, something like Harbor Freight. Um, their tools are cheap. The quality is questionable, but here's the plus. It's questionable quality, the price is low. So if you use it and you break it, then you know you've used it enough to go buy the full-on unit from somebody high quality. I'm not saying Lowe's is high quality, mind you. Lowe's is consumer grade, a little bit a cut above, a little bit a cut above, Harbor Freight. Uh, where did that thing go? There it is. But it's, uh, yeah, you know, you get to the point where you end up going out and buying some really, really high quality, like Snap-on or something like that. Don't go out and do that out of the gate. Do that after you've done this for a little while and you feel comfortable with the tools and comfortable laying out the money. I don't have any Snap-on tools. I've never had the need for them. But a lot of my tools are really old. I have really old school, back in the day, drop forge um, craftsman stuff. So, um, all right. That's the other thing you can do, by the way, if you want tools. Go to the... Um, uh, Antique houses, not antique, but that you know what I'm saying. Basically, what I'm saying is go old, because your older tools, yeah, they, they, you know, not always the perfect thing, but um, they usually are in pretty good condition. All right, you. So go right there. All right. We're going to do this, but we're going to do this in its lowest setting. So I've cranked the clutch all the way back to the lowest setting, and I'm on setting one. And then I can just feather it ever so gently, so I'm not worried about it. And once I get deep enough in, then I'm going to switch over to the, um, the ratcheting one. All right, and that's enough. I knew I was going to start doing that jumping thing because I really need to get a different screw head on there. Okay, one for the money. Yep. Two for the show. Three to get ready now. Go, cat, go. tighten anything. Not so much a big deal here with the plastic, but when I get to the putting the board on. Yeah, my arm's getting tired now. <laughs>
All right. Still feels the same. A little bit tight, which is good. All right. Next is the board. Okay. Oh, in case you were wondering, there's the micro switches for these. Pretty cool. Um, all right. Up here. Should go like that. There we go. It sits like so. Perfect. Okay, that LED thing. Touch in just a second. This one and that's the other one. The other, one's nice. the other one has a bigger head on it, so one of these goes in here, one of them goes in there. Right. Okay. And this one went right in here, which makes me think that is a grounding unit. I don't know why it would be there, but we're going to go ahead and just go with it. There we go. All right. LED lights. That's really all it is. Put it there. Perfect. Cap on. Noise. There's a couple in here. Just so we don't have it wander off on us. Again, all this can be done with a hand tool. The fact that I'm using a power tool, just because I have it. Not going to go all the way in with that quite yet. So I'm stopping purposefully before it gets to the end. Because <laughs> I'm not going to over tighten this. <laughs> Last thing I want to do. All right, so we got it all back together. We don't have any spare parts, which is the best success rate that we can have. No spare parts is the best spare parts. Um, we didn't find out what the problem is. Uh, we do know for sure what the problem isn't. We know that it is not the optical centering unit um, being loose because it is now tight. <laughs> we have ensured that is the case. Now the only thing really to do is plug it in, play with it for a while and see if it does that again. If it does then we have to look to see what else might be wrong with it. I don't... The fact that it really only happens with ATS... Oh, that's not true. It does sort of happen with ETS but just not as erratically. Erratically. Um, kind of tells me that the, the unit itself is seeing something. So push comes to shove, we have to get a new optical sensor unit because that could be that board is bad. It could be 
the main boards are bad, um, in which case I would just get a shot G27 and do a little bit of part swap and see if I could get it to work. But in any case, you saw how to take a G27 apart. You also saw it's nothing scary. It's nothing to be worried about. Um, we use some very simple tools, uh, a 5 30 seconds Allen wrench, small screwdriver, slightly larger screwdriver, slightly larger screwdriver, so basically multiple sizes of screwdriver. Um, I did use a pair of pliers to pull the wires, and I did use that plastic unit to pull the wires. But beyond that, it basically allowed us to completely disassemble this G27 and see the innards and see that we are greased, we don't have any bad teeth on our bearings, or not bearings, our slide unit, um, and to make sure that the screws were tight on our optical unit. So now we play with it and see what happens. Um, I'm not going to show you that because it takes hours for this thing to fail. So um, most I'm going to do is plug in and make sure it turns on, but if it doesn't, um, I'll just post something at the bottom of the video. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, you know what to do. Um, and we'll try to be back in the workshop more often for other things. Till then, I've been Derek Tebbers, the teardown of the G27. Till next time, take care everyone.